Welcome to the show. You often hear the saying, age is just a number. But what about the saying, age is only a state of mind. You're only as old as you think you are. On this show, we meet a lot of people over 50, over 60, even over 70, who definitely think they're a lot younger and they're out living life to prove it. Now, as we age, we do seem to encounter a few more challenges with our health. Today, we're going to discuss type two diabetes and lifestyle choices to minimize your risk of diabetes and to better manage it once diagnosed. Sitting in a chair, limited mobility, no worries. Please join us in the five minute fitness in the park with a chair option. To finish off with, we visit the Pisa celebrations and we look at how older Filipino Australians can connect and have fun. And we hear how councils, MPs and consuls are supporting different cultural groups within the community. Ninety percent of diabetes is preventable. Yes, you heard me right. Ninety percent and symptoms reversible. Today we're going to be discussing on NG for Life what lifestyle choices we can make to help prevent diabetes and reverse symptoms. So welcome back to Over 50 So What. We're talking about a really important topic, which is diabetes that happens to a lot of us as we get older. So thanks, for, for Camilla, for being here so soon after your hip-hop as well. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure being here. And as so long as I'm seated, I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm ready to catch you if you fall. <laughs> Now we have talked about some of the lifestyle changes that are, are needed to prevent getting diabetes and also after you get diagnosed with pre-diabetes or diabetes. Uh, today we're going to look at a bit more closely with the food choices that you might make. So what, when it comes to diet, what should we be doing before we get diagnosed and after maybe? It's interesting because our supermarket diet has led us to a culture where we believe that the food that's in the supermarket is healthy for us. But in actual fact, a lot of the food is not healthy for us. Probably the most common question I get is, what can I eat when I get diagnosed? What can I eat? That's the answer. They want to walk out and know what they have to eat. So when we look at diet, we're looking at foods on the carbohydrates. So foods are made up of um, fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, looking at the mac, uh, macronutrients. But it's the carbohydrates that actually spike the blood glucose levels. So they're the ones that we pay more attention to. So carbohydrates are anything that was basically plant-based, looking at it generally. You see a dietitian if you want to have a little more information on this. But um, generally it's anything that grew in the ground, came from something grew in the ground, um, or grew under the ground. Um, so if we're looking at an apple, it came off a tree. If we're looking at a carrot, it came underneath the ground. They're all carbohydrates. But the interesting thing is that when we think of milk or yogurt, it still has a carbohydrate component, but it didn't come from the cow. It didn't come from the cow. It came from the cow's diet, which was grass. So there's your plant base again there. So carbohydrates are an important factor to look at. We're looking at foods that are not going to spike your blood glucose as quickly. So this is where the glycemic index comes in. Glycemic meaning blood glucose, index meaning how high. So if we find foods that are lower on the glycemic index, they're not going to rush into the bloodstream very fast, which means they're not going to push the blood glucose up very fast, which means you have more time and your pancreas has more time to shovel out that glucose and get it into the cells where it should be. And that has another byproduct too. You don't feel as hungry, so it's that you're satiated for longer, so you're not tending to overeat as well. Is that right? Yes, but you're opening up another kettle of fish here because that goes straight into gut health as well, which um, is another subject. But basically, if you eat more uh, protein and a little bit of, um, depending on your, your cholesterol levels, your fat as well in your diet is going to satiate you a lot more. The carbohydrates, if you go for low carbohydrates, they're going to stay in the system longer and um, allow you to feel fuller for longer yes can you give us an example of some of the top five or ten types of food we should be avoiding that are high GI I'm sure all your viewers would just immediately think uh oh 
chocolate, sugars, confectionery, but it's also hidden in foods that we seem to think are good for us. So uh, potatoes are very quick to digest, so very quick to release the blood glucose. Then you've got things like watermelon. Watermelon, is, these are all good foods. They've got vitamins and everything in them, but watermelon is easily digested and shoots your glucose up. So if you think of a fruit salad as something healthy, it's probably predominantly rock melon or, f or watermelon, and that will shoot your sugars up. But an apple, on the other hand, an apple is very low on the glycemic index. If you, if you then, hello Duchess, if you then look at fruit juice, because people are um, under the impression that fruit juice is a wonderful healthy drink, it has vitamins and nutrients in it, but the problem is you're eating probably about four to six oranges in a glass of juice and you would normally not eat four to six oranges one after the other. And so you're going to get four to six amounts of that blood glucose going up. What about alcohol and soft drinks? Soft drinks um, are notorious for having um, around about 10 teaspoons of sugar in um, a can of Coke, for instance. Uh, alcohol has an interesting effect on the body, on the liver, where it actually, the liver can't do two things at once. So it's either going to metabolize all that alcohol or it's going to, it's got a storage of glucose in there where it can actually put that back into your bloodstream. Alcohol increases your weight which increases your risk of diabetes, but it will stop the liver from throwing that sugar back in. So if you had a, you remember how we used to go to the pub and there was always peanuts or chips or something on the counter, or your mother said, you've got to have something in your stomach before you go out. That was to reduce the quickness of alcohol affecting you. The alcohol is also going to affect you because you're going to be more likely to eat rubbishy food that's high in calories and high in sugar than you are if you're not, not having a drink. Now what about um, bread and rice? Ah uh, yes, your GP might tell you let's stay away from all the white things. So potatoes, bread, rice are very quick to digest. But interestingly, um, cauliflower isn't. So cauliflower is a good one. That's a white one, but go for the cauliflower. If we look at rice, rice comes in three sizes. Um, the long grain, the medium grain and the short grain. If you think that long grain will take a long time to digest, then that's the one you go for because you don't want one like jasmine rice is very high in the glycemic index about 104 percent and it will make your sugars rise very quickly so having something like a basmati um, mahatma or dungara the long grain rices are better and it doesn't matter if it's white it doesn't matter if it's black i don't care what color it is brown i don't care um, but if it's a long grain rice and you only have a small amount of it then that's a better choice but your doctor will probably want you just to avoid everything to start with. We just have to t be proactive. We just need to do regular like, checks to make sure we're going well. And again, healthy lifestyle choices. Uh, and what about uh, the uh, stressed? It's spelt backwards, can you not? <laughs> <laughs> well, stress is a very important factor. Um, people who have high so say you've got a job that's really stressful or perhaps you're in a family situation that's very stressful or you live on the south coast and you went through all the fires that was very stressful um, that can increase your cortisol levels and that can increase your risk of diabetes as well they now know that but the interesting thing is that stress also increases your appetite. So quite often you'll reach out for foods or comfort foods that aren't associated with good diabetes management. And this means you'll go for those sweet foods. And if you look at the word desserts and then look at it backwards, it says stressed. The main point is, as with everything, be proactive, make healthy lifestyle choices and you can live a long, healthy, quality life. Absolutely. You have more control over this than most other disorders. Well, thanks so much for all that wonderful information. I'm sure it's enlightened a lot of our viewers out there. You know, it's enlightened me as well. And thanks to your cat as well. <laughs> Duchess. <laughs>
We're doing a figure eight. Five minutes a day. And you're on your way. This is very good for me. I've got a plate and nine screws in my shoulder. Get those shoulders moving. Now we're gonna do this with a step touch. Raising your metabolism, getting your circulation going. Burning more calories. Again. Four more. Four, three, two, one. Now we go heel, 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 heel. And with a click the fingers. That's it. Keep it going. Now we're going to go around on the spot. Other way. Okay, here's a new move. Side to the middle. Side, so my body's not moving, just my leg. Side, together. Okay, speed it up, speed it up. Side, together, side, together. See, my body's straight. Now we do a little bounce. That's it. Side, together. Let's go. See, I'm putting a little bounce in. Take it back, take it back. And to the front. Oh yeah.
is celebrating with PISA, the Filipino Elder Association of the Southeast Region, celebrating the colourful culture of the Filipino community in Australia. And we're going to chat to some of our Filipino older Australians. Here we are with Flora, who's the current president of PISA, the Filipino Elders Association of Southeast Region. Hi, Flora. Hi. <laughs> Flora, can you tell us what does PISA do? Oh, well, we are involved with uh, community services. We participated in multicultural uh, activities. Uh, we help other Filipinos, especially the elderly ones, uh, if they need any assistance, they need some, uh, you know, the uh, home care, or, uh, you know, we, we um, you know, uh, get them into my care so that they will get all the services that they need. So you are very big and involving multiple generations, aren't you? So yeah, it's not yeah. just for the older Filipinos, it's no, you and the younger ones. No, because in the beginning it was, you know, you must be 55 to be a member because, you know, that was elderly, Filipino Elderly Association of Southeast. But then again, they slowly pass away and we just, you know, um, alarm that this organization will vanish if we don't take over. And we open up for the uh, young generations to come in. Yeah. Now you have a regular meeting every Sunday. every Sunday. So can you tell us what happens on a Sunday meeting? Okay, during Sunday we start at one o'clock at Sundowner Social Hall in Clarinda. So uh, from uh, one o'clock to six o'clock we're there. We have meetings, sometimes we have bingos, sometimes we have uh, health information sessions. We have uh, invited the fire brigade to uh, give us um, some information how to prevent fire. We have police to come and give us about, you know, um, safety in the home and in the community. And so many, many more um, social services come over and give us some information how to access them, you know, so that being elderly, you know, they might need all those services that, you know, they don't know. So we get all this information. Now tell us about your dance group, your performance group who shows traditional dances. Where do they perform? Uh, we perform everywhere. If we're invited, you know, as far as the other side of town, you know, there was one time we were invited in another, uh, it was at Diwali, Diwali, um, yeah, 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 and we went and danced over there and we have um, integrated with um, Vietnamese, they have some um, occasions in Springville Town Hall, we were invited. We were invited and we performed. So, Tony, what was the situation like uh, 30 years ago when you started PISA? Uh, it's really, especially the elderly that are coming here, they're looking after their uh, granddaughter and grandson. They feel lonely. That's why I established this PISA to make them uh, a little bit uh, happy and get together with the uh, all the family. And here tonight we have with us Ralph Arbacaz, the Philippine Consul. Hi Ralph. Hi. Nice now it's great to see you supporting PISA, the Filipino Elders Association of Southeast Region. Can you tell us what else is happening in the community around Victoria for the older community of Filipinos? Well from the point of view of the Philippine Consul General, uh, we are a new consulate, a new career consulate here. We're headed by Consul General Maria Lourdes Salcedo. And the consulate is here basically to, uh, yes, promote Philippine culture. We are here to connect with the community, especially our elderly who want to reconnect with their roots back in the Philippines. We're here to help process their documents, especially the ones that wish to acquire dual citizenship. And uh, yes, we're here for that. And we're really happy to see that the Filipino community here in Australia is extremely active, even up to their elderly years. For the past 30 years,
years, can you imagine? <laughs> yes, it's a very, very colourful community and Australia is all the more richer for having such a great culture here. Yes, yes. Uh, as someone who's only been here for a few months, I must say it is extremely uh, heartwarming to see how multicultural Victoria and Melbourne is. We're here with Ming Heng Tuck, who is the Member of Parliament for Clorinda. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Now, we're here promoting or celebrating the 30th anniversary of PISA, the Filipino Elders Association of Southeast Region. Now, you're originally from Cambodia yourself, so you appreciate the diversity of the Australian culture. Uh, yes, indeed, so very much, and it, it's a very uh, honour to uh, join or participate with PISA here tonight to celebrate their 30th uh, birthday, uh, which I would say it's a lot of dedications and a lot of sweats and tears at time for an uh, 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 organisation like PISA to you know form in 1993 and to carry on their duty, responsibility and aspiration up until today. So congratulations to PISA. Here we are with Steve Stakos, councillor from Kingston or city of Kingston. And Steve's been very heavily involved with the multicultural community. Hi Steve. Hello. How are you? <laughs> now you've been involved with the Filipino community for a while. Can you tell us a bit about your involvement? Yes, uh, I've been on the City of Kingston Council as an elected representative for around 15 years and so in many ways I've actually seen the community age and sort of move forward and this is the 30th anniversary dinner that we're having tonight and I remember coming to the 20th anniversary dinner Yes, 10 years ago. Uh, so the Filipino community is a community that is ageing in the city of Kingston, along with the Italian community and Greek community and other communities of that nature. And so what we're finding with a lot of our migrant communities is that they are getting to that point where many of them are entering into their 70s, 80s and 90s. And so council's role is changing from one to supporting them from forming their own groups to actually supporting them, keeping their groups going. Now what would you say if there's any Filipino person watching us today, sitting at home, what would you say to them about coming and having a look at what you're doing? Hi everyone, especially among Filipinos who are here in Melbourne. You can come and see our performances and we can, you can come and see us in uh, social hall and uh, you know you can get more information and you can see all our activities that we are go having every time. Awesome. Thanks so much Flora. Thank you Carol. My pleasure. <laughs> if you're an older Australian not born in Australia, why not check out your local council, see what groups and activities are available for all of us with different cultural backgrounds please go to Diabetes Australia for the risk assessment tool and other information on type 2 diabetes. If you want any information on any of the guests on the show, please go to our website, carolohalloran.com. We look forward to connecting with you through YouTube, Facebook and Insta. Replays are available through YouTube, Facebook, CTV Plus and the website. Now, reach out and find a new group or activity and make some new friends. You might even find someone who went to the same school as you did. Keep connected, keep active, keep having fun. I'm Carol, over 50, so what? Thanks for watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. Jump on Facebook, join our group, get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. I'm Carol, over 50, so what? <laughs>